He's very cynical about certain things in a very Italian way. Robert De Niro is here, joined by his About My Father co-stars. And we've got the stories that define the week on People in 10. I'm Makon Jovu, bringing you everything you need to know about pop culture right now. 10 minutes are on the clock, so let's get to it with the first five, starting as the world mourns rock and roll legend Tina Turner. Remembered for her signature soulful vocals, Turner reportedly died in Switzerland on Wednesday following a long illness. She was born in Tennessee in 1939 and rose to fame in the 70s as part of the Ike and Tina Turner duo alongside her husband. Ooh, the, primary, keep on burning. the pair had a notoriously tumultuous relationship before Turner set out on what would become an iconic solo career. In recent years, the singer battled a number of serious health problems, including a stroke, cancer, and total kidney failure. She was predeceased by her two biological sons, Craig and Ronnie. Tina Turner was 83 years old. Switching gears now to a billionaire's engagement that came with a massive ring. People confirms that Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is engaged to Emmy-winning journalist Lauren Sanchez. The couple are currently vacationing together in the south of France. Where Lauren was seen rocking an estimated 30 carat diamond on that finger while on Jeff's $500 million yacht. A source tells us they're on cloud nine and madly in love. This as Prince Ludwig of Bavaria wed so the Eva King who fainted during their vows. The new princess reportedly fell backwards into her groom's arms but she was all smiles after the ceremony. And as dating rumors swirl around Blackpink's Jenny and V from BTS, with the K-pop superstars spotted holding hands in Paris, Brie Tiasi and Nick Cannon are getting real about their co-parenting arrangement. Every dollar that I make is for my family. After Brie posted that Nick got her a Lamborghini, the comedian joked that he doesn't give child support, he gives Lambo support. And that seemingly goes for the moms of all his 12 kids. I'm not you give in a the child support yeah. system that is ran by the government. Oh, my so account is their account. And your favorite stars are stepping out around the world. In London, Princess Kate is embracing summer. The Princess of Wales surprised school kids at the Chelsea Flower Show by joining them for a picnic and a bug hunt. At one point, they asked Kate to autograph their nature sketches. She had to decline per palace rules, but she doodled flowers, trees, and even a pond for them instead. This as her father-in-law, King Charles, embraced Spice Girl Jerry Halliwell, 26 years after these iconic photos were taken. Also reuniting St. Elmo's Fire co-stars Demi Moore and Andrew McCarthy and scandal love interest Carrie Washington and Tony Goldwyn. Hi, Tony. Hi, Carrie. You look great. You look so beautiful. You look amazing. <laughs> In New York, Mershka Hargitay and hubby Peter Herman hit the red carpet with the whole fam, while Riley Keough made her first public appearance in LA since reaching a settlement with grandmother Priscilla Presley over her mom, Lisa Marie's trust. And Scandaball continues with more bombshells from Ariana. I think they had sex in my guest room while I was sleeping in my own bed. On this week's Call Her Daddy podcast, the Vanderpump star also dishes about going to couples therapy with her now ex Tom Sandoval during his affair with their co-star Raquel. And this week's People Cover Story, we're catching up with the fierce and funny Julia Louis-Dreyfus. I want to accomplish so much more, 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 more. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm loving it. I want to, you know, I want to have my health. I want to keep doing really cool gigs. She's perhaps best known for playing Elaine on Seinfeld for nine seasons. I'm in love. <laughs> and still remembers when it ended 25 years ago. There was definitely a grief period. We all loved each other so much. But there's no stopping this icon with her latest project hitting theaters this weekend. This movie is so much about human relationships. He's been lying to me this whole time. I wasn't lying, I was encouraging. That's not true. You were lying to be encouraging. It really gets into the weeds of the connections between people, and that's where I live. I love to explore that as an actor, both comedically and dramatically. It's kind of my happy place. We're continuing to celebrate women who are breaking stigmas around mental health. Brought to you by Maybelline, Brave Together. 
I've always been an open book. Demi Lovato is encouraging others, especially teens, to speak up about the tough stuff. Talking to people and asking for help is more than okay and is absolutely what you should do. And she's setting an example by being open about her own struggles. I don't want to paint the facade that everything is totally perfect yeah. and, and fine, but I am in a really good place. That's helped Constance Wu, too. It feels like, you know, I'm finally getting to be heard and tell my story. She's specifically highlighting mental health in the Asian American community, saying there's a lot of avoidance around the more uncomfortable issues. That, paired with intense shame amid backlash over a tweet she posted in 2019, led her to a really dark place. I was in a mental place of just beating myself. Apathy. Uh, okay. uh, I want to talk about it so other young women who might be struggling with the same thing know they're not alone and that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It takes yeah. work. Now, let's move on to some screen time. I am so excited to be joined today by Sebastian Maniscalco of Robert De Niro, Leslie Bibb, Kim Cattrall, Anders Holm, David Rashi, and Brett Dyer, who star in About My Father, which premieres May 26 in theaters nationwide. This is the first summer since we have to say goodbye to your dear mother, and you're going to leave me to burn his papas and eat the hot dogs alone. I'm going to ask you all five questions. For question number one, you'll give me one answer. Question number two, you'll give me two answers, and so on and so forth. All right, let's do this about my father. It has so many different character types, which makes it dynamic and relatable. Sebastian, can you tell me one way that you relate to your character? My father and I don't really have a lot of those kind of heart-to-heart -heart conversations that you saw in the movie. A lot of my communication with my family is through laughter. So we're either laughing or crying, and when we're crying, we're, we're trying to get back to laughing again. What I liked about Salvo character is he's very cynical about certain things in a very Italian way, about people or things, especially in this situation with this very waspy family, country club family, there's a lot to go after. She's strong, she's tough, and she's loyal, and she's loving maybe a little too overly protective. I think that there's a, um, a curiosity with her life and like she's a little, I, I, I think she's on the balls of her feet. I like his clothing, sharp dressed guy. I wish that I were rich like him, like he. Well, Doug's on a spiritual journey and so am I. <laughs> Beat around the bush, the absolute icon Robert De Niro stars in this movie, and it must have been a thrill to act alongside him. Name two iconic Robert De Niro moments you experienced while filming. I think smoking with Robert De Niro is pretty special. That scene was, uh, I was wondering how we were going to play it, and, and he blew a perfect circle. So my aim in the end of that scene was to blow another circle through it. You nailed it, because I was wondering if that was CGI. That was a real circle that you did. Yes. Oh. Yeah, a smoke ring, if you will. Unheard of talents here, I'm telling you. Kim Cattrall, the smoke ring blower. <laughs> Breaking news. Kim Cattrall can Breaking. blow some smoke. That's right. <laughs> to watch this uh, master, you know, do what he does, we all try to do it, but then you, you watch him and you see how it's actually done. Robert, you did a great job playing Sebastian's father. And I'd love to know, what's your favorite moment on set working with Sebastian? We had a scene in the bedroom at the in-laws uh, house and he did some imitation of a turkey or a chick, you know, he did some chicken walk or something. He made me laugh every time he did it. This movie is so funny, obviously, because it was co-written by the brilliant comedian Sebastian Maniscalco and has an absolute all-star cast. Can you name three times you lost it or you couldn't stop laughing on set? One of the scenes I had a lot of fun doing was the big meal where we're eating the I shouldn't give it away, but whatever. I think it had to do when we were eating the uh, and the pasta. No, but, but you'll say, because that's giving, we're eating oh, the pasta. Sorry. For a stand-up, you know, it, which is very immediate, it's very in the moment, uh, to switch gears and do film, definitely I had I had a good time uh, kind of making fun of that aspect with my castmates. 
The movie is heartwarming, it's hysterical, but it also has these really rich themes of what it means to be an immigrant or the descendant of an immigrant in America today. What are four takeaways that you would love the audience to have after watching the movie? That family is pretty much everything. Family is kind of everything. And it can be your chosen family, it can be your you know, family you create your family you create your blood family your chosen family your friends especially coming out of like pandemic i think it's important to have a tribe i think it's a similar message about just like openness and listening and hearing people out and finally give me five reasons to see about my father oh i think it's a great time yeah. i just think it's important to be back in theaters i would just want people to leave this saying hey we should get together more often i'm just really excited for people to go and watch with their family and have a good laugh and not possibly a cry uh, fun i would just tell people it's the best movie of the year my father has an old Italian saying, family isn't one important thing, it's everything. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Now everyone, be sure to check out About My Father in theaters May 26th. All right, time's up. See you back here next Thursday.